right, welcome back to Shannon's Plants Planting Time. How are you today? Today is a very special time for me because a couple of months ago, or maybe even longer than that, I did a video on orchid care because I have been caring for 11 or 12 orchids now for about a year and in that video I talked about care requirements and I took you to the store and we went shopping and my fiance proposed and then I heard another YouTuber say that you shouldn't do a video about orchid care unless you had gotten an orchid to either bloom that hadn't bloomed before or rebloom after you had bought it already blooming. So I am here tonight to express my extreme joy over the fact that I have succeeded in getting my orchid to rebloom. So I will show you. Now it's just a flower spike. It's not blooming yet. The flowers haven't come in. But this, sorry, this is it. It is definitely a flower spike. I have no doubt about that. I can see the little flowers forming at the end. It is coming from way up here instead of down here where the roots would come. And it is a dendrobium. And it doesn't say I bought it at Lowe's it doesn't say anything about what kind it is and let's go over what the big box store says it says as far as light goes within six to ten feet of a window with no direct sunlight Keep soil, soil moist. Do not let it stand in water. Ideal temperatures between 60 and 85. Fertilize every month with a 25-9-9 NPK ratio. So I'm here to tell you that I have not followed this care card whatsoever. I'm going to tell you what I have done for this orchid. This orchid sits about two feet from a north facing window that does not get a lot of light at all because there are plants in that windowsill and this is sitting down. I'm looking over trying to describe it sitting down on a, uh, uh, what do they call those things, shelf that is lower, about a foot lower than the window, but it is being blocked by, the sunlight from that window is being blocked by like a monstera leaf, uh, philodendron, uh, moonlight, um, an imperial green so all those leaves are kind of shading this orchid from that little bit of north facing sunlight now he does have a grow light that is pretty much right on top of him it is just one of those grow light bulbs it is for seedlings and whatever the those little you know cheap 
bulbs that you get. And, uh, anyway, so that is what light requirement he gets. And I water this little fella every, I would say every three to four days. Because he's in pretty much sphagnum and some bark, a little bit of bark, but just mostly sphagnum. And he dries out pretty quickly. And I think I might have lied to you about not knowing what kind it is. Oh, yes. I just found it. Dendrobium to Nita Pink Stripe 209. That is what kind of uh, dendrobium it is. I don't know why I haven't seen this until now. It was shoved down in to the plant and I have not seen that uh, that identification card until just this moment. So anyway, I apologize. So anyway, we we're talking about water. I water him every three to four days because he is in sphagnum and he dries out quickly. So I bottom water and then I pour a little bit of water on the top and let it run through. And then I place him back in his spot until he needs water again. So anyway. As far as temperature goes, it stays about uh, 75 degrees in this room Fahrenheit. And it does get a lot of humidity because I have a lot of humidity loving plants in here. And so my humidifier is running almost all the time. I don't know if that makes a difference with the orchids at all, but I guess it's definitely not hurting any of mine because the foliage on all of my orchids has exploded. So anyway, um, let's see. Um, now, I want to talk fertilization because I think that's important. I started, I was using just Liquid Dirt and Super Thrive on him. And, oh, by the way, I water with filtered water. I think that's very important. Okay, back to fertilization. I fertilize him every time I water. And I was watering with uh, Liquid Dirt and Super Thrive. Well, recently, I read about, uh the phosphorus in the NPK ratio um, helped plants to flower. So anyway, I started fertilizing with this Orchid Bloom Booster. I don't know why I'm talking like that. Anyway, Orchid Bloom Booster. And it has an NPK ratio of 11.35.15. So that is much different than what they recommend on here, which is 25.99. So mine is 11.35.15. And I have been using the Orchid Bloom Booster for about... A month now yeah about a month and so I don't know if it was just time for the orchid to bloom if it was the difference in the fertilization or what but something has caused him to develop this very wonderful flower spike and I am completely excited about it because 
I thought that I just, you know, did not know what I was doing with orchids. I knew that I was doing okay because the foliage was doing so great. But, um, I mean, I have, like, one phalaenopsis that I have in, like, I had to repot into a, um, he's in the sink getting watered. But, you know, those water jugs you buy that are kind of square? I had to repot it into that because the roots were so big and his foliage is just off the charts. But anyway, so... I have definitely noticed a change in my orchids since I started using the Orchid Bloom Booster. So, I would highly suggest that to anybody. I love Liquidirt. I use it for all of my other plants. And, but I'm thinking that maybe the Orchid Bloom Booster, which I actually had sitting under my counter. I didn't have to buy it. I just saw it and I was like, hmm, somebody said, you know, the phosphorus was, you know, what made things bloom. So I was like, I'm going to start trying it. So I really do think that maybe that is what has been a game changer for my little dendrobium here. So anyway... Totally excited about this flower spike. Um, I put on Instagram about it. And I was talking about like, you know how sometimes you get to focus in on like what you're doing wrong with your plants. Like, this plant ain't growing that well. Or, this plant isn't doing that well. Or, this plant seems stagnant in its growth. Um, or, like, my Stromanthi Trio star has a lot of browning leaves. Um, and you get wrapped up in that negative thinking. And I guess this is kind of just what I needed to boost my confidence a little bit again and my ability to care for plant and to you know, really kind of, I'm not saying I know what I'm doing, but you know what I mean. To kind of feel like you're, you know, on the right track, uh, doing the right thing for the plants. So, you see this old flower spike here. I've heard you're not supposed to cut them. I don't know. Um, I might cut this one see if I can get another one out of here but anyway I just wanted to share my good news with you about my dendrobium and my flower spike and I wanted to make my video because even though I already did one before um, and then I saw that video that said you shouldn't do a video Unless you've gotten a, uh, an orchid to either bloom or rebloom. So here I am making another video because I have succeeded or the plant has succeeded in reblooming. So I'm completely 100% excited about the situation. So I plan on doing just what I'm doing with my other orchids and hopefully I will get some more blooms. If I do I will share them on Instagram at Shannon Collier 26 if you want to see it. If you want to follow me on Instagram that would be great. And anyway it is like I don't know uh, almost 1 o'clock in the morning so I think I'm going to go to bed and um, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you can share my excitement about the flower spike. And to all you, uh, pro orchid people out there, I know you're probably going, oh, geez. But anyway, 
you know, it was a personal accomplishment for me. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Follow me on Instagram. We're doing a giveaway, a double giveaway. And, uh, as always, I hope to see you in the next houseplant video. Bye!